My name is Jonathan Morin, and we have Jeff Wilmington here. We're going to talk about some of the cool new stuff that came in NSX for vSphere 6.4, some more uh, familiar topics to those who've touched NSX before. Um, really, what, what we're going to focus on was the focuses of this release, uh, which, I mean, this release kind of, it was a major release for us. It packed in a lot of features, some stuff that we've seen in routers and switches for, for a long time, NAT 6.4, routing over GRE things like that. But the focus was more uh, where we were really trying to drive towards were two things, kind of advancing security capabilities for our customers, you know, enhancing micro-segmentation use case, and making that and NSX usage easier, kind of streamlining the flow, streamlining the process, streamlining achieving micro-segmentation and other network virtualization uh, functions of NSX for, you know, uh, Folks, customers of all sizes, actually. So, actually, it's it's a good, it's an interesting transition from what Sai and Eve were talking about with containers here, because what we see with containers is apps becoming extremely distributed, even more distributed. But actually, we've been seeing this quite for some time. So, while a lot of our customers can achieve micro segmentation with rules based on a three tier app. Like my, my web tier, you know, if my VM is tagged web, it shouldn't talk to my VM that's tagged DB. Um, that works in a lot of cases. We see a lot of customers doing that. Uh, in a lot of cases, it's more complex, right? There's more, uh, even without containers, even before we get to com containers, if you're dealing with a big application like SAP or some Oracle apps or um, really all sorts of things, uh, when you look into larger enterprises, apps are just more complicated. So have, have any of you guys actually worked on like a micro-segmentation project? Yeah. Where, where uh, any comments to how like, you know, you basically got there? Are you lo looking at web rules, database rules, or is it more than that? And, ha and I don't know what you- All the above. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, going back to 2014 NSX and fast forward, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well many others. So uh, it just goes back to when, when, we, when, he, when we said, how do we make this easier? You know, we're going to look at some tools we built and some of the stuff you guys saw last year that will show how they've advanced, but also just the essence of a policy. What does that mean uh, in making that policy more straightforward? So yeah, one thing that was powerful about micro-segmentation was taking that perimeter security down to the VNIC level, down to the app closer to the app or VM or, as we see now, container. Uh, but part of it was also the security is coming closer to the app. So how we actually write our rules is not only layer, you know, this IP address shouldn't talk to that IP address, but it's this a VM with this name or this tag shouldn't talk to a VM with that tag. Or uh, this OS shouldn't even be on my network if it's an old, yeah. not compliant OS. Yeah, go ahead. And so we Done, we've added some more attributes that we are calling context-aware micro-segmentation. And what we really mean with that term is just a word around that essence, around, okay, what are we really doing here? We're really like adding all these attributes that create a policy that's around the application, not around something that's a consequence of an application like an IP address. So are you talking about like external, say like CMDB, things like that? Is that what you're talking about as far as user context? So there's a, there's a number of pieces okay. here. I guess yeah. we can walk through it. So the latest with on the network side is going past layer four into layer seven and mm -hmm. saying, okay, I'm not just going to trust the TCP port. I'm going to look past that and see, uh, even if it's encrypted traffic, is it a TLS version I want on my network or is it a TLS version I, I don't want to allow on my network because it's maybe old and non-compliant and has other security issues. Uh, on the user side, some of this is stuff we've actually been doing for some time with uh, what we've called ID firewall. Oh. But, uh, but in this version, we're doing, uh, we're addressing the RDSH um, issue, right? So if you kind of take what we've done with firewall rules now and how you write firewall rules, if you actually run the vSIP commands on the actual host, you'll see that our rules are actually translated to IP addresses, right? So um, when we talk about it a little bit more, you'll kind of see why that's not a great not a great scenario for RDSH session host, and you'll we'll show kind of what we've done to uh, to kind of improve on that to make to kind of fill in that new use case. Right. So, yeah. 
depending on the context of the application, what does it mean to have user level security? In the case of uh, VDI, like VMware Horizon, just knowing the user is enough, okay, this is your desktop. In the yeah. case of RDSH, that wasn't enough. We need more context. There's going to be more users on this terminal. Who are the users, and what should they each access, even though they're on the same, same yep. unit? And then all the stuff we get by plugging into our various security partners. Yep. We're going to start to demo this, but um, before we get into that, this is probably super obvious for some of you folks, but w because Layer 7, there's, there's a wide variety of Layer 7 capabilities in the market, whether you're talking about a next-gen firewall or you're talking about stuff that Gigamon does, we just want to be super clear about what we mean when we're doing Layer 7. So if we just think about some packets running on the network, um, today NSX is, does a great job of securing them based on, well, a lot of stuff we just talked about, but from a network side, MAC source destination, IP source destination, five tuples, you know, TCP, UDP port. But in this case, we've kind of colored these bottom two flows blue as being the same, but in reality, if you go past the TCP header, uh, we now see, okay, like the example I mentioned before, one application, or at least past the TCP port, one application is using TLS uh, 1.2, which we're okay with, and one is using TLS 1.0, which actually is something we've been trying to get off our network for quite some time because it's got some issues. Uh, so now we can now we can do things like that. So uh, while you know, like a wireless access point, when they say layer seven, they're trying to block things like Facebook. From a data center perspective, securing east-west traffic, we're looking at those most common applications, <coughs> east-west applications. So things like protocols like DNS, TLS. Can you give me a rough number how many protocols you can detect? Yeah, we're starting with 50, about We're 50 starting with about 50 right now, right? So we're not in the thousands like that a normal, like a, say like a next generation firewall has access to thousands of different kinds of application contexts, right? So we're starting with 50. We're definitely gonna have those listed out on our website in terms of which, which what they are, the standard ports and protocols that they would typically run across. Authentication. Authentication yeah. and so forth. Um, but it's just 50 to start, right? So it's, it's, but they are definitely the ones that, are, that we've seen or that we've seen within the data center and with our customers that are the typical ones, right? So HTTPS, obviously, which version of TLS are you actually running? We know that um, as we start to look th at things like that, HTTPS may, it may be okay for the first five tuple, right? But I need to know kind of what the version of TLS. So we're starting to look at some of those metadatas, so being able to bring in that information to actually write firewall rules based on that. Is this stateful or, sta or stateless? It's stateful. 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 So I'll go. I'll give us. I'm going to give um, just a quick recap because I know not everyone, even folks even on the live feed, may not be totally familiar with micro segmentation. I'll kind of give an just a brief recap so everybody kind of gets an idea of what we're talking about, and then I'll dig a little deeper. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's actually been so. This is all a functionality of the distributed firewall within NSX. The same distributed firewall, just yep. additional capabilities. That has been a stateful firewall, but only up to the layer layer four level. Yep. We'll get right into that here in just a minute. Uh, yeah, we talked about our partners. So just in contrast, you know, we're, so just we're super clear about what we're doing with Layer 7. And then last, I guess, theme that we uh, want to clarify as we show all the different specific data points and features that have, have rolled into this is just ease of use. Not only ease of use, but even separate from features, a lot of our conversations with our customers are not only just, okay, what is the feature you want? How, how, you know, how do, what do I add into my, my PRD? But what is micro-segmentation as a best practice? Like, how do I get started, right? Yeah. right. Like the, the biggest conversation piece is, that's fine that you have all this technology, but I have no idea where to start. Um, so what can you, how can you help me take me down this path, right? And so these five steps, if you will, to micro-segmentation are, um, around the tool sets that we currently have in place, right? So if those are folks are familiar with the ARC and acquisition and vRealize Network Insight, um, that tool here in step one is actually a tool that gives you kind of a holistic kind of um, overview of the flows, the security, the um, basically the communications that are happening within your organization. So it gives a customer access to data that they probably never had before, right? So I get some, I'm starting to get more context in terms of how these applications right. function, right? Because we've, I've know, you know, when I was on the customer side, I would ask an application owner, you know, which ports and protocols do I need to have, you know, I need to secure for you? And they would say, well, go to the vendor. Well, then I would yep. go to the vendor documentation and the vendor documentation was probably 90% accurate. And then I would have to kind of figure out that last 10%. So 
instead of having to try to figure all these things out for yourself or for, you know, by going through a bunch of documentation, things like vRealize Network Insight would actually give you um, the information that a customer would need to kind of get started down that path. And, and this, this process may not even be perfect. Like sure. actually, you know, we can rip it all apart and say, you know what, what I'd rather do is actually before choosing an application, or I'd rather secure all the applications at once. And that's why we thought, well, why don't we just throw this out there? Because this is the conversation we're having more and more. Right. How do I get started? Uh, how do I achieve eventually zero trust? Is that even realistic for me? Is it not? Do I have a different goal? Uh, yeah, and what are the yeah. steps to get there? Yep. And often, if you start on a green field, okay, you can uh, nice compose the policies sure. and everything. But if you start, I have a sl slash 16 full of VMs <laughs> and I don't know what they are doing, yeah? Right. And of course, you have Absolutely. to yeah. Absolutely. Start. figure it out from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, I got to figure, I gotta figure that out. Just block it all and then open it up as you go. <laughs> wait, wait for, yeah, wait for the complaints. <laughs> kill, <laughs> kill them all, right? right. Kill them all and let them sort it out. Yeah. Put the organization on yeah. alert and ask them to raise help desk tickets. Exactly. So yeah. easy, so exactly. easy. Exactly. Who calls yeah. and yeah. what is the application? Up. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, so on oh, cool, the um, the application rule manager, yep. I assume that's like application mapping, right? Yeah, it's going to be your ADM so type stuff. That's something we're going to demo. We actually, actually demoed last demo year, yeah. but we're going to have uh, yeah. some some new capabilities to show there. But that's where you would. <coughs> so, we realize network insights tool. It's just a vis visibility tool. Get that broader visibility across the data center. Um, they have some cool visualizations for that. ARM is kind of our application rule managers. Okay, now I'm I'm ready to write the rules. I'm going to start a live capture. What do the flows look like? Now let's lock it down. Yep. Okay.